Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC 20 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. For the last few days, we've been using a really fun Porygon Z team, so this is just going to be our last episode with it. Of course, this is a rental team built by FebZ, so check them out, linked in the description below. And let's just jump right into today's episode. We're actually going up against one of my favorite Pokemon in the format, and one that I think is still kind of underplayed in Cobalion, so honestly, if we lose this, it's a win for me still, because I love Cobalion and I want to see that Pokemon thrive and succeed. However, let's see what we want to do here. Cobalion is actually a really terrible matchup for Porygon. Um, it's actually a terrible matchup for this entire team. What in the world do I do against it? <laughs> like, especially if it's Assault Vest, I don't have damage against it, and it can just Steel Spike into Clef. Huh. The one op like one way around it is like here's the thing so like with Dragapult obviously you can just lead Dragapult Cobalion and just beat up right and Steel Spike turn one mm. this is actually so bad I don't I don't know how we beat Cobalion it might be Trick Rooming <laughs> as weird as that seems like go Clefairy Porygon and Trick Room uh, sacrifice Clefairy so that I get a free switch and into Rotom. And I want Urshifu in the back. I really like my opponent's team. I think Dragapult Cobalion is actually so strong here. I like. I don't feel great about Incineroar even though my opponent has a lot of physical type Pokemon because there's the Milotic. I can't intimidate the Dragapult, which isn't really going to be offensive here. Uh, and then like even like yeah, I can intimidate Cobalion, but it's just going to dunk on us in return. So. Yeah, I don't know. This is a really tricky matchup, but I'm excited to see my opponent's team. So let's get into the first game of today's episode. Question of the day, I want to know what your favorite starter evolution is, either competitively in VGC 2020 or in general. Let me know in the comments below. I think for me, the Gen 4 starters are some of my favorite ones uh, and hold a lot of nostalgia factor. Um, and as always, if you guys enjoy, please share support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I think I have to follow me here and Trick Room. <laughs> I can't believe I'm Trick Rooming, but I, I don't even see how else I get around this. Like, I really don't. Uh, and then what I can do is bring in Rotom and, I don't know, Overheat or Max Flare into the... That's gonna... If it's a Solvest, like, we're, we're just... What?! Oh, I did not see that coming. Now that is a twist. Oh my goodness. Is it gonna be Coaching Cobalion? It totally is gonna be Coaching Cobalion. I mean, this is actually better for us. <laughs> um... It's definitely better for us, I think, because I think Cobalion just... Yep, there it is. Scarf Coaching. But, like, that's actually fine, because I can just helping... Or, sorry, uh, like, I got Trick Room up, and I can just Max Darkness into Dragapult next turn. I don't even know if this is a knockout, but maybe? Oh, it's not even a KO. Okay. Well, that is actually the best case scenario. I know this is something that players are, like, using now to kind of bait you into thinking they are, um... Yeah, the beat-up stuff, but I actually think if it was just traditional beat-up, we'd be in a lot tougher spot. So it's either really slow Dragapult, or it's just Scarf Cobalion. Um, so I kind of want to just help me hand Max and Darkness here. Unless you're Sash Dragapult, but if you are, you don't KO us anyway. Could max guard here, and Cobalion could just target down, if, if it's not Scarf for some reason, and for example, it's just really slow Dragapult, but yeah, Cobalion switches out. Milo would be slightly scary here, <sighs> yeah. But if I get the special defense drop, like, Cobalion is absolutely useless for my opponent right now, right? So, um, if you max guard here, fine, then I can just knock out the Milo next turn. If you don't max guard, then I, and I just KO the uh, Dragapult, also fine, because then I can just protect the Porygon with Follow Me and Friend Guard. So, yeah, I, I think, like, if it was just normal Cobalion, like Assault Vest Cobalion, I, I think we hard lose to it, so we got lucky that it's not, <laughs> hilariously enough. Okay, no max guard. Let's see if this is enough to pick up a one-hit KO. Oh, is that sashed, or did it just hang on with one HP? It's sashed. Okay, that's bad. That is bad. Uh, maybe, maybe Max Darkness Moonblast is a KO onto it anyway. I, I don't think I actually needed a Helping Hand. Yeah, I'm thinking Max Darkness Moonblast was a KO onto Dragapult anyway, so I probably should have just gone for that. So Sash, Dragapult, Scarf, Cobalion. 
Yeah, actually, this is fine, right? Because I can just bring an Urshifu and just Aqua Jet into it and Max Strike. Even though I've given the Milo the boosts, I don't actually think that's too much of a problem. Uh, Cobalion is not really a threat to us right now, especially if we take advantage of Trick Room. So, yeah, let's just Aqua Jet and Max Strike here. The only problem, I guess, is the small chance Milotic just protects here, and then I get it to plus four special attack. But even if I do that, I still have uh, one more turn of Max with Porygon. Even at plus four special attack, I don't think you're KOing Porygon. Like, that's just how, uh, like, unoffensive Milotic is. This, the plan of making this turn is super obvious, but uh, no protect or switches, which is very, very, very good for us. Okay, I could have gone for Surging Strikes just to cover for the option of Dragapult switching out, but no, this is fine. Yeah, it's just Muddy Water, that's okay. Yeah, we don't take much damage. Nice. And no Accuracy drop, so this should just be a one-hit KO. Especially after this Fidef drop, yeah. Oh man, I, I honestly had like a near heart attack in team preview. Like, okay, I think if it's Assault Vesco Balion, I don't even know what I do against it. Like, the best strategy is to at least not let it, like, like what I led with was the plan, right? Like, don't let it set up um, and trade the Clefairy for Trick Room because then I can bring in Cobalion or Rotom and then double up onto the Cobalion slot. Not Cobalion, sorry. Um, Urshifu or Rotom and then double up onto the slot. And then, like, at least beat up doesn't go off. But it didn't end up even being the case here. Uh, so we can just Surging Strikes here into the Arcanine. What's in the back? Rotom. Yeah. I think doubling onto the Arcanine here is fine. Cobalion's not going to beat us 3v1 here. Okay, they don't even bother going for a Protect, so I think Surging Strikes should just be enough for a Knockout here. First one almost does half. Second one almost does half. <laughs> it does have a Berry, but the third one will pick up the Knockout, so nice. Uh, actually, and what's nice too, well, I was going to say what's nice, but not really, is uh, originally I was going to say the max strike brings Cobali on speed down, but because it's Scarfed, you can just close combat away now, but you can't knock out three Pokemon in two turns. So I think we should be good. This should probably do like 50 60 percent ish. Never mind, that's the one in KO. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, Cobalion probably doesn't have any bulk, right? It's like max attack, max speed, but. Nice. Wow, okay. I really do think Assault Vescobalion is a lot trickier of a matchup, especially because one way, like when Dragapult was maxing, I was like, wait, what? But like, honestly, Max Dragapult doesn't fare very well into Porygon Clef, right? Like even with the plus one boost, it still wasn't even able to knock out the Clefairy. So yeah, we take those. Uh, I don't think like a Salves Cobalion is an unwinnable matchup, but it's like we're starting from behind and we're basically reacting to our opponent as opposed to pushing the tempo, which you often want to do with Porygon. So someone asked a couple days ago, oh my god, this next team is Pikachu and Blastoise, that's awesome. Someone asked a couple days ago, why I have Trick Room? That last game is an example of why Trick Room can be valuable uh, on Porygon, because it's a fast Pokemon, but it's not necessarily the fastest thing in the format. This next team is fascinating. I mean, Pikachu could actually put in some work right now by paralyzing everything. Um... Does outspeed everything that I have. <laughs> However, if I just go Rillaboom Clefairy, I'm thinking like a helping hand grassy glide is just enough to knock out Pikachu. I don't know that damage calc though, so I can do that with confidence. I think Porygon Clef, as per usual, is fine here. I think Urshifu is some must bring. Ah, the last one's actually really tricky because Rotom is immune to the paralysis and actually hits a lot for super effective. Incineroar is nice for intimidating to Tyranitar. Rillaboom and the opposing Incineroar, and Rillaboom actually does pretty good damage against Tyranitar and Blastoise. I'm actually leaning towards Rotom a little bit here. But I think the threat of G-Max Blastoise is very real as well. So I think I'm going to lean towards the the uh, Rillaboom here, but I think you could definitely make a good argument for Rotom in this matchup as well, especially because of Togekiss, like, one way like you can beat this team is basically stalling out Porygon Max, maxing the Togekiss in the late game and just sweeping through because Airstream slash Starfall pretty much hits everything on this team for a ton of damage. But it's Blastoise Togekiss, so I feel validated in my decision to actually bring the, uh, the Rillaboom. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, mainly because I was like, what if you Shell Smash turn 1, right? Um, so I think the safest play here is always to just max strike and helping hand into the Blastoise. Because worst case, like 
There's a chance Togekiss protects here as Blastoise tries to Shell Smash, otherwise I could just see Togekiss going for Follow Me as you Shell, uh, shell Smash, but I don't... And if you, maybe they don't Shell Smash, right? Maybe they just go for the G-Max Cannonoid, but uh, Porygon's never fainting here. So I want to just put on as much offensive pressure as possible. There is a small chance Blastoise protects as Togekiss goes for like a Yawn, which would actually be a really good play, but it's also very risky. Yeah, Yawn's a reason to actually maybe think about targeting Togekiss here, but I feel like that's relatively unlikely given this lead. Might be wrong on that though. Alright, they're gonna max boss boost immediately, so no Shell Smash. Uh, I could've just gone for the knockout onto Togekiss, because if I KO that, then Rillaboom just matches up pretty well into Blastoise. Maybe that would've been better. Maybe I didn't actually need to be worried about Blastoise setting up, because I could just decrease its speed back to neutral after two max strikes. Yeah. Let's see if Togekiss just goes for follow me here. Okay. So we KO Togekiss, which means I've paved the way to KO the Blastoise after just a little bit, uh, after one more max strike, so this is fine by me. Don't think there were many plays that my opponent could have made that like significantly put us behind. That being said, this Clefairy is rather defensive and not invested in special defense, so... The G-Max move here is still going to hurt a lot. Yep, sick animation by the way. Clefheim's on though, and it, we actually survive after uh, one little bit of chip damage too, which is nice. It's actually life for Blastoise. I was going to say, that it did a fair amount, but... The thing about Blastoise, and I do want to try out a Blastoise team soon, is that it's really cool, but its damage output feels kind of underwhelming, which is why... Some Blastoise teams I've seen are like weakness policy, with Comfy actually. Comfy is becoming a very, very common partner for Pokemon to enable weakness policy setups, which is really cool. Really boom comes out, okay. Uh, that's fine. I don't even think you KO, like... I want to just helping hand max strike the Rillaboom here. Because I have Urshifu and my Rillaboom in the back, my Rillaboom has a great matchup against the Blastoise. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for the KO until the Rillaboom. Uh, because the opposing Rillaboom, we actually don't have great damage output against. Like, my Rillaboom and Urshifu are actually very weak to the Rillaboom here, so... Hopefully, we can just pick up a KO onto Rillaboom here. There's the Glide. It might... It, ooh, yeah, I mean, you will double up Naporygon. Hmm, and that's probably a knockout, right? Uh, maybe it would have been better to have... Go for Follow Me, Max Strike? Although, actually, because you don't knock out the Clefairy here, I have Friend Guard still, so I don't know if Blastoise KOs us. There's the Cannonade. Okay, Porygon survives, nice. So we're good. So I get one more Max Strike off, which is nice, before I faint. Uh, this is why it's so critical. If you max while your opponent maxes and they have a you know the, the residual effect coming out, it's a really, really big deal. Um... So often when you're playing with Pokemon that have the residual effects like Blastoise, Charizard, Venusaur, often what in Colossal, you know, often what you want to do is stall out their uh, max first, but it's kind of tough to do that, I think, in my opponent's shoes. I think I'm going to go Urshifu first because my opponent did have Incineroar in the back, so by bringing in Urshifu I can just, yep, exactly. Um, oh, you know what's interesting here? You could just go for a fake out onto us to knock out the Porygon, but Porygon's going to faint anyway. And Urshifu has the Sash, and it doesn't take residual damage. So I think it's fine to just Max Strike into Incineroar and go for the Surging Strikes. Because AV Rillaboom, plus any bit of chip damage coming up from Urshifu, should be able to knock out the Blastoise in the endgame. And they Max Guard, that's even better for us. And Fake Out into Urshifu. Okay, yeah, I was thinking, I mean, that makes sense, I guess, but this should be game then, I think. To KO into Incineroar, perfect. We got exactly what we wanted out of Porygon this game, which was three knockouts in three turns. So that's good. Yeah, now uh, Rillaboom just comes out, which is exactly like why I thought I maybe needed to bring it. Because like, while Rotom is pretty good against Blastoise, I don't know, I was like in the off chance Blastoise get like a Shell Smash and get set up. That seems pretty bad for us. Cool teams that we're going up against today, though. Coaching uh, Scarf, coaching Cobalion plus. Sash Dragapult, Life Orb, Blastoise, uh, with the Pikachu on the team as well. 
I don't think we've had a very good record against Pikachu on Road to Ranked, actually, so I'm glad that did not come out. That might have messed us up. I actually think Pikachu had a really good matchup against us if you uh, pair it with Redirection, like Togekiss Pikachu, because you can knock out Clefairy uh, and paralyze Porygon, which is really scary. But now I can just fake out Close Combat and then Glide. It's always better to just fake out Close Combat here, because... I, I mean, in this game, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference, but uh, because Urshifu pins your opponent down, given that they cannot protect, uh, there's no reason to not go for Fake Out Close Combat this turn just for chip damage, and that ensures that Glide KOs the subsequent turn. In the very small chance that it would survive a Glide plus Close Combat, and then Blizzard double freezes. <laughs> Although this is, that's just like a really obscure scenario. Like, in, in this endgame, I think anything we did was probably going to be fine, but yeah. Just want to consider, you know, the uh, when you play with Urshifu in the end games, it's really valuable to consider the fact that your opponent can't protect against it, so it's guaranteed damage. Pair that off with the fake out, and it's always just like, you know, uh, super free damage at no risk whatsoever. Very cool team, though. Uh, honestly, like first time seeing G Max Blastways on Road to Ranked. Uh, so yeah, I think it was definitely really scary. I think G Max Pikachu, honestly. Scared me even more in team preview. So, but once again, glad that didn't end up coming out, but I definitely could have posed the threat to us. Uh, but I'm all for these really awesome strategies and teams. Uh, yeah, I mean, seeing Dragapult Cobalion and seeing how, like, this team doesn't have much for Assault Vest Cobalion makes me want to, like, build another team around that. Because that was, like, one of my favorite duos in the early season. You know, like, one of my first teams was that beat-up stuff. Alright, this team looks familiar. We have a near mirror match. I don't know if my opponent's team is a rental team, because I don't know if I recognize that exactly, but, you know, Porygon Clef, I, th I felt like I often saw Wick, Drake, Vision, Talonflame as well, because you can Tailwind, which is actually really bad for us. So, uh, once again, we could Trick Room in this in this, uh, in this this one. Like, if I go Porygon Clef and Trick Room turn one, I think that actually holds a lot of value. Because we're definitely not outspeeding our opponent in this game, right? I don't think that's happening. And the, so the question is what I want in the back, because like, I don't think Incinera's Intimidates actually really hold much value, considering that Talonflame's not doing much to begin with, Rillaboom's already walled. Um, well, I guess we could bring Incinera to wall the Rillaboom, but then like, Dracovish and Urshifu still kind of punch through us. Because we're admin Urshifu as well, I think we'll be going first under Trick Room. Uh, that's between Rotom and Rillaboom. Both are pretty good here. I'm gonna lean towards uh, the Rillaboom here, though, because I think... Outside of Talonflame, Glide just does so much damage. So yeah, Trick Room is actually the approach we're gonna go with in this game, uh, because we're definitely never we're never outspeeding our opponent, right? And I think if you look at a, a team like this matchup for my opponent's end, you're probably thinking, okay, I have Talonflame, they don't have Talonflame. Why don't I just Tailwind and outspeed, right? I think that makes a lot of sense. So because I know that we have Trick Room and because we're slower with the Urshifu, which I don't know if it makes that big of a difference, but I know that we won't be speed tying most likely under Trick Room. I guess I shouldn't say that. I mean, Arshifu's our admin a fair amount of the time, but yeah. The idea here is to just, we, we need speed control because we're gonna get outsped otherwise, and in a mirror match like this, we're just gonna lose that way. It just ends up being Porygon and Clefairy though. Oh, the mind games from this lead. I really thought Talonflame was gonna come out as a lead. Uh, I hate this because of the potential speed ties. I really do. Um, but I don't want a trick room right now either. Oh, this is so tough. Because, I'm not, what's the safest play on either end? I, I have to attack, I think, and max strike. It's just, who do I target? And the other question is, do I help a hand or protect with the Clefairy? Because I can see their Clefairy protecting. I'm going to target Porygon. I'm going for the helping hand max trick, but if they go for the same plan, I lose the speed tie. We're done for. So, for that reason, it's never the safest play, but... The safest play is always to click follow me on Clefairy, but I don't know if I, like can actually get away with playing super safe here because it's an exact mirror match right now. We do Dynamax first, but I think it should be a speed tie. I'd be shocked to see Porygon not be our same speed. Unless they don't max here, but they max. Yeah, I really thought they would want to go with Tailwind. So the fact they didn't catches me off guard, but I don't. I wouldn't have led any differently uh, against Clef Porygon here anyway. I, I just hate that this might just come down to a turn one speed tie immediately, but that is the dynamic of a mirror match. 
Show me Cleft Protect. Okay, there's Helping Hand. Ah, uh, they just go for Follow Me. Well, that means they don't KO us and we KO the Clefairy. We go first consistently. I mean, we maxed first and we went first here, so I'm wondering if Porygon actually is just slower. So they ended up going for the safe play, which I can totally commend and respect. Um, that being said, I don't think they KO us in return, and now we have Clefairy where, uh, while they don't, which is good. However, they get a free switch in, which is good for them. And they might have just max strike Clefairy here anyway. Nope, they target Porygon. Yeah, we survive. Okay, that's good. Because now I can... Uh... I'm really curious if Porygon is just slower? We'll one-shot the opposing Porygon with no friend guard. So I can just go for follow me here. Talonflame could come out. Yeah. Oh, it's actually Urshifu. That's an interesting brain. The safest play for me is to just strike into Porygon and follow me. But I think it's very likely Porygon max guards here. We're so defensive with Clefairy though that I think it's fine to play it safe here. Like, I could Moonblast. Max Guard and Moonblast was something I was considering. But we know Max Strike's going to knock out the opposing Porygon if we get it. Uh, maybe it's better to target Urshifu because then we get a guaranteed speed drop onto the Porygon. Uh, what if I follow me here and targeted Urshifu? Oh, okay. It looks like they're not going to go for the Protect. Okay. It's just close combat. Uh, I think that should seal us the game, honestly. Because I think Max Stretch should KO the opposing Porygon. Okay, we, it is a speed tie. I wanted to confirm that, though. I was curious. Yeah, so I, I, you know... This turn, I think it was fine to play safe, because even if the Porygon protects there, worst case is he Surging Strikes into the Clef. I don't even know if that's a 2 hit KO, because this is very physically defensive. So what's great for us now is that we KO the opposing Porygon, and we get a speed drop on the Urshifu. Uh, which means now my poor gun outspeeds in this last turn, so I can just go for another uh, strike very safely. What could come out right now is Talonflame for my opponent's in, which allows them to Tailwind. I gotta think about that. Um, for that reason, Talonflame is pretty scary. So I think bringing out Urshifu here is fine, because we have the Focus Sash. Ooh, it's actually Dracovish. Ooh, I might have messed up then by not bringing Rillaboom out first, because you can just Scarf Vicious Rend into Porygon here. I think Rillaboom realistically closes out this game anyway by itself, so I think here I'm going to just Max Guard. Yeah, I should have brought out Rillaboom, because even if you have Talonflame, I can just fake out the Talonflame anyway, so I actually made a slight error in my Pokemon choice here. And you can see why it's really important to consider who to bring out, especially in the end game scenarios like this. Um, that was a big mistake. This was game over if I just brought it at the uh, Rillaboom Boom first. Mm. I want a max guard here, but the off chance. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna strike and close combat here. Because the Yoshifu can't protect on the opposing end. Uh, they're just gonna fish this round, but that's fine. Yeah, because Rillaboom's going to beat uh, Rill uh, Dracovish 101, and the only problem here is that my close combat goes first, so I'll take more damage in return. Um, oh, like, this whole time, wait. <laughs> I thought it was the water version, so that's even better for us. Yeah, I mean, we're going to trade close combats here, um, but... Now I bring in Rillaboom, uh, and because we're guaranteed to be faster with the Urshifu, I just fake out into the Dracovish, Aqua Jet into the Urshifu, uh, and then Glides should KO the Dracovish. So this is why I was thinking, you know, I think Rillaboom is more valuable in this matchup. Um, Rotom Heat, like, could have been really interesting for the Talonflame. I'm, I'm still surprised Talonflame didn't come out. Honestly, my game plan was Trick Room in this one, but, uh, you know, that's why it's important to adapt and not stick to one game plan. So, yeah, fake out into Dracovish here, super safe. Uh, yep. Our minus one speed, so we'll be faster. So we can just fake out Aqua Jet here for guaranteed. Uh, I mean, it's a guaranteed play. 
I love I love the end games you get to set yourself up for with Urshifu, uh, honestly. You can often find these really safe plays uh, if you push the momentum earlier on. So this team is definitely one of the more hyper offensive teams we've used in a while, but it's very, very fun to play with. And so yeah, Dragovish doesn't match up super well into Rillaboom. Uh, even if you're Bandit, I just don't think there's much you can do at this point because Glide will always go first, right? So this turn is super safe. Yeah, you can protect all you want, but Aqua Jet's just gonna go through that anyway. Yeah, so, I don't know, if I brought in Rillaboom earlier, I thought it'd been better. I would've been able to go through Fake Out and Fake Out into the... Actually, no, I mean, it might've actually been better to have brought out Urshifu, because if I bring out Rillaboom, you have Sucker Punch on the uh, Urshifu, so that Urshifu can just Sucker Punch into the Porygon. So, ends up working out for us. Yeah, I can just Glide now. And Glide Detect is the safest play. Yeah, because a Crit Fish's Ren doesn't knock us out here anyway. Although I think Glide is a 2-8 KO onto the Dracovish. Yeah, so close combating there is probably safer in the off chance like it's not Choice Scarfed and it has like Ice Fang and it freezes us. Ah, but then, then you'd be slower. But it is Scarfed as you can see given that it outspeeds the uh, Urshifu. So, yeah, Aqua Jet plus Glide now is a guaranteed KO. So, good thing we brought the Rillaboom. Yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised my opponent just went with Clefairy Porygon on their end as well. Um, and that's why I kind of want, felt like I needed to make a big play on turn one. Like, us knocking out Clefairy while surviving with Porygon was a really big deal because, uh, yeah, as you see, Porygon can one-shot opposing Porygons uh, if there's no friend guard support. So, uh, glad that ended up being, that ended up working out for us. Like I said, slightly risky because helping hand... Like, if my opponent goes for the exact same play and they win the speed tie, I think we just lose on turn one outright. But I was like, what are the odds my opponent makes that risky play, right? And in best of three, they might be like, that's actually our best win con. But yeah, the Trick Room game plan didn't actually end up coming forward because of what my opponent ended up bringing. Now we're actually up against Trick Room for our last game with this team. Uh, I think you just lead Hat in Needy. Ah, uh, that's actually a big problem. Hat in DD. <sighs> What's interesting is like Porygon can reverse Trick Room. Trick Room is not, like if Trick Room goes up against this team, we're like basically done for, right? So I think I need to go in uh, Incineroar Porygon, Rillaboom, Urshifu. You might be asking why. Here's my answer. I don't think this is a good matchup. They have Dragology as well, which is actually very scary. So basically what I'm trying to do with this lead is force the Follow Me Trick Room turn one, in which I can get away with by going for a U-turn and uh, Trick Room. And then I get Rillaboom in, so then I can glide into the NDD, hopefully for a KO. Oh, they let Dust Hops into D instead. I mean, that's actually fine too. Um, that's actually even better because we don't face much offensive pressure from the Dust Clops. I don't even know if they go for Follow Me here, but we are faster with the Unity, which is actually good because it means we'll get terrain control one way or another. So, yeah, I'm going to go for the U turn Trick Room play turn one to reverse their Trick Room, bring in Rillaboom, and then glide uh, Trick Room again or Max Darkness the subsequent turn. I just hard lose to Dragology if I don't do this, so this is basically like not a great scenario for us, and so we have to play really smartly. And even by playing smartly doesn't guarantee that we'll come out of it positive, but it's our only chance. I could have actually maybe brought in Clefairy in the back, because what the Clefairy does is protect- oh, that's so much damage, wow, okay. That was a crit, nice. Uh, what the Clefairy does is protect from- I think I brought out Relibum here, right? Yeah. The Clefairy protects us from the Dragology for a turn, and if I can protect myself just for one turn from Dragology, Max Strike does so much in Retaliation. I don't think Max Darkness KOs Dusclops though, which is the problem. So the question is whether I go for Trick Room again this subsequent turn. Because now they know I have Trick Room. This turn was easy to make, next turn is the hard turn. Next turn is the hard turn. Oh, I really want to do it again. I really do. But if I, like, 
This turn, honestly, I feel like decides the game. Actually, I think Max Darknessing and Gliding here is also fine. And I'm actually going to double up onto Dusclops because there's a small chance NDD protects. If NDD protects and we just KO Dusclops, boom. Even if NDD goes for Follow Me, like, Max Darkness should do so much damage to the Dusclops where another Glide KOs, which means you don't get Dragology set up. So, I actually think just maxing here is fine. I really wanted to make, like, the sick highlight play of going for another Trick Room Reversal, but there's a chance now my opponent's worried that I just try to reverse Trick Room again, because I've kind of gotten into their mind by going for it the first time, and they're thinking, oh, they're just going to click it again, so I'm just going to Nightshade this turn. Let's see. Okay, they're just playing it safe with Follow Me, yeah. I suspect it's follow me trick room. I mean, that's the safest play on their end. Maybe I should have gone for a highlight play. <laughs> but like I said, Max Darkness does enough where I think a Glide KOs does slaps the subsequent turn. Ah, that's close actually. I don't know if it's KO. I'll see if they actually went for trick room. They probably did, but... Maybe I got into their head. Ah, they went for it anyway. Yeah, I should have gone for it. If I, if I glide into Nidhi and trick him again there, that's game, I think. However, this is at least more manageable than had I just maxed Porygon on turn one. They've lost a lot of resources, right? I just don't think glide is a KO into Dustflops, which is my main concern. Because now they bulldoze here for sure. There's no way it KOs Dustflops, actually. This is where if I brought Clefairy, but do you KO Porygon? Probably if you Worm Wind, right? If Glide KOs Dustlap, so we just win. Maybe I just strike here and Glide. I don't think it's enough for a knockout though. So I think you max Dragology, you Bulldoze. Uh, so I could have max guarded. I need a Clefairy in this game. Yeah, I, I messed up by not bringing Clefairy, I think. <sighs> because if I bring out Clefairy, then what I could do this turn is basically switch the Rillaboom out into Clefairy and then follow me strike the next turn. Although I guess then you could just go for... Actually, Clefairy alone is valuable. Wait, let's see if Glide KOs. Ah, I would have if uh, there wasn't Grassy Terrain Recovery. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure a plus two max Warm Wind KOs. Unless they didn't Warm Wind for some reason, which would be really surprising into the Porygon. Like, if they ooze, I actually don't know if that's a knockout. Double crit. It was really close on the Dust Flops. Really close. They do ooze. Into Rillaboom. What? Nice. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. Okay. I think you... I mean, they were probably reading into a max guard from Porygon there. So, us not max guarding is very helpful. I don't know if this is enough for a one-shot, though. Oh, that definitely is not. Okay. Oh, uh, that's not great. I'll take it still, but yeah, it's not great. Um, now I can at least bring an Urshifu to Aqua Jet to KO the Dusclops. But Astrogology is still a big nuisance. I might protect with Porygon this next turn. Not Incineroar. That's pretty useless for now. Hmm, okay. I, I, uh, I really wish I just went for another Trick Room. I didn't have the guts to do it. The thing is that the Max Guard this turn is super obvious. But can I win? You, you gotta target Porygon here, I think. Yeah. I'm going for the obvious play, and I think this is pretty predictable. I could see Ally Switch coming out here. Okay, it doesn't come out. The thing is, if you don't get the Bulldoze stuff off in this game, like, we also win, even with Trick Room being up. Okay, so I can call that turn correctly. That's good, but still kind of tricky. However, what I can do here is just protect, sacrifice the Porygon, get a free switch in into the Ensign, and then I can fake out into the Dragology slot. It is hat is the last one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, there's still two turns of Trick Room, though. That is kind of bad, isn't it? Do I actually attack here with Urshifu? That might be the play. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, because we have Focus Sash, so... Just Hyper Beam into Dragology and Surging Strikes here, I think, is fine. Okay, they're gonna ooze. That looks fine. Oh, if it's Life Orb expanding... Oh no, Life Orb Dazzle is the problem now? This is close, let's see. I think that might be enough to knock out after the special attack boost. Oh, Porygon hangs on! Let's go! Or if we don't miss Hyper Beam, we win, I think. Because then we just fake out. Yeah, it is Life Orb. And Hyper Beam connects. Oh, what a game. That was crazy. Nice. Yeah, it, protecting Urshifu doesn't accomplish anything there. If I protect, I... Actually, I guess if we protected there, we would have won anyway, because Porygon survives. But I think it's critical to attack... Okay, it's it's, it's still not over, actually, because it is 1v1 against a hat with plus one special attack, because we do end up fainting from the Life Orb. But I think Incident is uh, one of the best Pokemon to have on my team to match up against the Hatterene here, because I can just fake out this turn, and I have the Berry. So you need at least two attacks to KO us, and I think Flare Blitz is a two to KO onto the hat. <sighs> okay... Crazy game. Crazy, crazy game. Let's fake out. And since this is the last episode with this team, honestly, might just do one more game. Because uh, it's been a really fun set of games today. We went up against some awesome Pokemon today, honestly. Dragology, Blastoise, uh, Coaching Cabalion, all the fun stuff. Yeah, Hat Protects, which is correct. You don't want any chip damage right now, so good play on their end. Oh, uh, I actually really gotta be careful about this. I think we always go for Lash Out instead of Flare Blitz, because I think Lash Out into Flare Blitz is a knockout anyway. The reason I don't want to Flare Blitz here is if I Flare Blitz Trick Room, and they Trick Room, and then we're in KO range. I'm thinking Lash Out into Flare Blitz is a KO, but this actually might not be. Let's see. Sick animation, though. Oh, they end up gleaming. Okay, how much does that do? I don't know, Flare Blitz KOs here. I That was actually a tricky endgame. Maybe... Yeah, I'll, I'll explain my reasoning in just a bit. Okay, Flare Blitz picks up the knockout. Oof. Oh, that was a crit, though. That might have mattered. I don't know. It was really close. I mean, it, Flare Blitz is significantly stronger than Lash Out. Uh, our Barry would have activated, but I think Dazzling Gleam would have... I mean, Dazzling Gleam definitely would have KO'd anyway. So, I think that, that, that might have been a game-winning crit, honestly. Which is super lucky on our end. But, basically, what I didn't want to do was Flare Blitz taking so much recoil that then... Uh, and then if they Trick Room, then a Dazzling Gleam just ends it. And I was thinking, in the worst-case scenario, yeah, Lash Out plus Flare Blitz is a damage roll into the Ream, But we're never fainting to the opposing hat. Uh, if they Trick Room there, I think we also probably end up winning because the little bit of life orb damage makes the difference um that's why the hat protecting was actually really smart and yeah it's our last episode with this team so i'll play one last you guys get a longer episode today um man yeah i, I do want to calc that real quick instant into hat yeah I, I think the crit i think it was most likely a damage roll let's see yeah, I think it's it's most likely a damage roll in that position where... Um, but the thing is, they don't take that life orb damage. Mm, it's really close. Yeah. I think it's a damage roll that's, that can go either way. Um, oh my. So funny, we went up against Blastoise and then Dragology in separate games today, and now we go up against both. Against Trick Room, once again. Let's uh, go. <laughs> I just maneuvered uh, out of it with what Porygon plus. Do I? Do I? I think I might just go for the same game plan. Porygon, Incin, Rillaboom, Urshifu. Uh, Rotom, maybe you can make an argument for. Uh, I guess as I was saying, the last game I needed Clefairy, so I don't know if I actually learned. Like, did I actually learn something today? Because I'm not bringing the Clefairy. <laughs> yeah. Um... This is saying Flare Blitz plus Lash Out minimum does... 
like 80%, maximum does 94. And this is against max HP. Actually, I, let me check how much uh, attack investment. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Uh, especially if Blastoise goes for Shell Smash. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> okay, not the lead I was expecting. Uh, I just want to double check how much offense this has. Yeah, it doesn't have. So it, it, it is. It's basically a roll against the hat in that late game. So the crit, the crit just secured it for us, but we got lucky to get it there. But once again, the explanation behind the end game was don't take. If we take enough recoil, where uh, single target dazzle just KOs after trick room goes up, we just instant lose. So at least I'd rather have a roll than not have a chance at all. Uh, in the off chance they make that other play. Oh, this is so scary. I, I really feel like this is Shell Smash, so like, I wanna... I mean, I'm just going for Max Strike here, but I don't know if that's the right play. I'm gonna Max Strike U-Turn here, because like, if you are Shell Smash, you're gonna go for Follow Me. And if you're not Shell Smash, then even if you follow me, you have to max the KO the Incineroar. Nice lead by my opponent, though. Fun episode one way or another. We went up against a lot of really cool teams today, so I'm glad because I think uh, this format has so much to offer. Yeah, here's the Shell Smash. I thought so hard about Trick Rooming there, but to be honest, I mean... Actually, if, if this isn't Sash and and this just one-shots... It is Sash too, yeah. So my, my what I was most worried about ended up coming out, and what could have been really cool was... Mm, fake out into, or sorry, yeah, switch Porygon into the Rilla Boom and then fake out. Ah, uh, this would have been a good argument for Clef once again, so I guess I need to be bringing Clef more, I think. I just really like having so much damage I'll put in the back, but it's off, like, obviously not being, not, not, hasn't been super great for us. Uh, they probably have Incineroar on the back, right? So I feel like I need to go out into Urshifu, because Rillaboom here is too obvious, and like, one way we could win- I mean, Shell Smash is definitely coming up this turn, it's gonna be Wide Herb as well. Yeah. Nice, nice, nicely done. I bet Lee just Scream Shell Smash as well, right? Um... But if I switch into Rillaboom and he just max Blastoise turn 1 and KO Incineroar with the G-Max attack and Rillaboom takes the residual, we fall behind so much on turn 1. At least here, like, it's possible. Like, it's still do- this is winnable. And what's interesting is that Psychic Terrain is up, so that the Incineroar can't actually fake out us right now, which is valuable. So, I'm just gonna Surging Strikes into that. I think I need a Max Guard here just to burn a turn to max from Blastoise as you target Porygon. To be honest, I don't know if actually even at plus 2 you KO Porygon. But I'm gonna play it safe this turn because Instant never has Pryo. You can't fake out right now. Uh, that was a nice play. That was a very nice play. I got baited hard there. Alright, let's see who Blastoise targets. Um, that was a very tremendous play. I think this time around, we beat Blastoise comfortably last time, this time around, I'm not sure. I think Porygon doesn't survive the G-Max attack, honestly. If it does, then if we just max strike here, we actually would be would have been in a really good spot. Let's see if they targeted Porygon. I would think so. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, at least we get that turn correctly. Because, like, basically how we win this now is to stall out Blastoise Dynamax, because then Rillaboom can just go for the G-Max attack. Or, sorry. Uh, just glide into uh, Blastoise. We'll get some decent chip here on the Rillaboom, honestly. But that, that was too obvious. I, I fell right into my opponent's trap there. Mm. <sighs> what to do, what to do, what to do. Porygon's going down here. I mean, I can strike. We are intimidated. Strike and go into Incineroar here, I think is fine. 
Uh, question is whether I can win the end game with what I have. I think the answer is yes, even if Porygon gets one shot here, which it should. I think to be safer, my opponent should glide in uh, cannon into Porygon. Yeah, I think Porygon honestly could have survived uh, just the plus two cannon aid. But I, I don't have a better play to make this turn. Yeah. Okay, so there's a, a, the upside is that there's only one turn of max left for my opponent. <clears throat> so I can bring in Urshifu right now. Oh, I just re- wait, 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 wait. He's on White Herb. Hold on a second. I totally missed that. It ended up being Life Orb. What if I just bring out Rillaboom right now? No, because if I bring out Rillaboom right now, you are just going to double up into that slot. Or sorry, by doubling up, I mean you're going to just switch out into Incineroar and Protect. Right? So I think we go out into Urshifu. Going into Ur Urshifu and fake out close combat is pretty safe. Fake out close combat. Close combat. Yeah, I like that. I. Because I, I need to. Okay, they switch out. That's actually great. Because my Rillaboom now. Uh, well, we don't one shot the Incineroar, do we? No, we don't, we don't, we don't. Uh, given that the Blastoise had the Life Orb, though, yeah, I don't think Porygon was surviving a plus two attack. So, unless Close Combat knocks out here miraculously, this gets tricky. Although, what we can do this next turn is just double protect, but if the Rillaboom also. Oh, they actually target. Uh, Urshifu. Interesting. I don't mind that, actually. I think. Oh, that's a knockout. Nice. Is that a crit? <laughs> uh, it's been a lucky day for us, I gotta say. Because um, that's not KOing without the crit, I don't think. Yeah, that actually, I think, secures up the game, honestly. Because now I can just protect. I, I think, like, we didn't need the crit to win. But, once again, it just makes it up so much easier now. Because <clears throat> now what I do is protect the Urshifu, sacrifice the Incineroar, so that I get a free switch and into Rillaboom. That was a nice... Uh, my opponent made some really nice switches this game, honestly. Made some really nice switches. Okay, boss place. Still not over, actually. Oh, there's two turns of terrain left, actually. I have to think about that, don't I? Oh, that's actually... Yeah, that's a problem. Because it means if I just sacrifice Incineroar this turn, Blastoise can just protect on the last turn. Oh man, I might actually have to switch out Incin outright here. So then I can switch it back out. <sighs> My opponent might make the hero play here, but I'm thinking from their end, they're thinking, oh, even if you have really boom in the back, I can just stall your terrain out. So I have to switch it out just so I can switch it back in. So I don't let let I don't have it on the very last turn. Or I don't bring it on the last turn of grassy terrain. Okay, there's Glide. Let's see if they ice beam here. If so, props to them. It's water spout, okay. That's okay, I think. It's a lot of damage. Oh, I don't know if that's okay. Oh, that was a crit, but we kinda deserve to get crit after all the RNG we've had today. So I can't even complain about that. Uh, now, here is the interesting question. Do you protect against my glide? Do you even have protect? Oh, I take so much damage there that now I'm in glide KO range from the opposing Rillaboom, potentially. I mean, my initial play was to swap out my Rillaboom here, but they might just go for like the Rillaboom speed high. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Um, 
My other option is to switch into Incineroar. Uh, if I switch into Incineroar... I just, I don't know if Blastoise has Protect here. So I, I think I'm just gonna switch out into Instant and Glide. It's kind of a gut feeling. Like, the game plan originally was to switch the Rillaboom back out to reset the terrain, but even, so, like, here's the thing, like, if it does have Protect and you don't KO us, then I can just Fake Out, switch my Rillaboom out. Alright, you goes for the Glide, is that a KO? No! Oh! <laughs> okay. Yeah, so if we survive, or we... I, honestly, I, I felt like my opponent deserved to win this one, because I got the crit on Zillion Sin, so I feel like justice was served here in the end. I am, can't even be mad about that. That was a really cool team and really well played. Um, maybe Trick Rooming was the move. Maybe bringing in Rillaboom earlier was the move as well. But I think my opponent made some really excellent switches in this game that I really needed to catch on to. Um, wonder if there's any chance our Rillaboom survives there. Also, I just want to double check to see how fast the Rillaboom is here. Because I don't think we're max speed, so maybe they just outspeed us. I don't know if it was a speed tie or not. Um, yeah, we're 108, so there's barely any speed investment. So I'm guessing the opposing Rillaboom was faster. Um, yeah. I do want to do the damage calc real quick to see what how much Glide actually does. I'm thinking it's a KO anyway. We had like, what, 30 HP? I think it actually might have been a damage roll onto us. <laughs> But, uh, like I said, I it was like a crit for a crit, right? So and, and we had the favorable damage roll earlier today, so it's not like always going to go in your favor. And if anything, I think my opponent definitely played better than I did in this one, so I can't even be bitter about an L here. But this was a really fun episode. It's a lot longer than usual. I mean, by a lot longer, I mean like 20, about 15, 20 minutes. But since it's the last day with this team anyway, I just wanted to do, uh, I wanted to play one last one. And yeah. Uh, I felt like we had used up our luck, so honestly, uh, yeah, can't feel bad about that one. Really cool to go up against two Blastoises uh, in, in one episode, though. Didn't think that would ever happen, so not going to drag this on any longer, but thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. Definitely, I think, one of the more fun episodes we've had in a while. A lot of cool opposing teams, and I think overall, just, uh, yeah, happy about my play, but also happy to see my opponents play really well as well uh, and see some really, really cool stuff uh, from their end, so yeah. Thank you as always for watching. Thank you to Fevzy for the team. Once again, you can find him linked in the description below. I've linked the rental code as well as his Twitter and Twitch. And uh, yeah, thank you guys as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to answer that question of the day and I'll see you guys soon. All right, peace.